Good evening. Welcome to our daily devotional scripture that encourages you to pray. My name is Jim Buckman. I'm pastor at Faith Lutheran Church. And tonight we have a very special guest, Pastor Del Campbell. He's a network support missionary in Gary, Indiana. And our church has been blessed for a couple of years now to partner with Pastor Campbell in his ministry. And so tonight we're going to hear a little bit about um, his ministry and different aspects of it. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit also about our upcoming uh, trip there and uh, the projects he has lined up for our church. And I want to encourage you, I want to wholeheartedly encourage you that if the Lord moves you to look into uh, doing ministry with Pastor Campbell, to reach out to him directly and uh, to discuss what the specifics of that might look like. I want to encourage everybody as we get started um, to do a couple of things. First of all, to share this video onto your social media. When you do that, you make it possible for lots and lots of people to see the video. And we are so amazed by the results of this within our ministry. Uh, in the last 28 days, we've had over 7,250 people view our videos. And so we praise God for that. And we know that the Holy Spirit is using you to get the word out to lots and lots of people. And so that's um, just so exciting because we're not a large church. Uh, we're just a small, you know, average sized church. Uh, but God's using this technology and he's using you and the word is going out. And so we, we praise God for that. You know, when this pandemic started, there were a lot of question marks, a lot of fears, a lot of worries, but God has uh, worked through this and in spite of this. And our goal is not to go backwards to whatever it was before the pandemic. No, we are going forwards and we are absolutely going to continue the social media ministry. Uh, it's just so exciting. It's so, so exciting. I want to encourage you to use uh, any of the resources you find on our Facebook page, our website, our YouTube channel, any of these things that you like. We know that most of the people um, watching our videos are not members of our church, and, and that's wonderful. If you find anything that's valuable there, please use it. In the background behind me is a penguin, and this is from my trip about a year ago. At this time, I was uh, in Antarctica, and I did get down to the South Pole. And uh, it was quite, quite the adventure. And I did that with the uh, Air National Guard and love to talk with you sometime more about that. But I'm just using that as my backdrop today. Um, and so it's just, it's just fun to share it. So there's no place I'm, like home. <laughs> what's that? There's no place like home. <laughs> there, there's a, that, that's what that penguin's saying, right? <laughs> so guys, listen, we're going to bow our heads now for a word of prayer as we get started. And, um, and then we're going to jump into our discussion uh, with Pastor Campbell. So let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. We thank you for all of your blessings in our lives. We thank you for the gift of faith. We thank you, Father, for the privilege of doing the good works that you have prepared in advance for us to do. Father, we lift up to you all of our missionaries, our missionaries who are overseas, our missionaries who are stateside, and we pray for your protection upon them, especially for those who serve in dangerous places. Uh, we pray for your protection upon them, your protection upon their faith, and for those who come to faith as well. And Father, we pray for your peace that surpasses all human understanding, to rest upon them, to keep them strong in whatever circumstances they are facing. And bless us, Father, who have the privilege of partnering with them, of supporting them. Bless us, Father, to be your, your vessels and your instruments uh, to encourage them uh, in the work that you have put before them. Father, bless our time now with Pastor Campbell as we learn more about uh, your work in Gary, Indiana. Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name, according to your will and for your glory. And all of God's children, we all say... Amen. Amen. So, Pastor Campbell, it's good to have you, and uh, you're a speaker to Faith Lutheran Church, And I, but I do think this is the first time I've had you on our evening broadcast. Uh, yes. We look forward to having you come back again, and I think next time you're going to get me some pictures in advance, and we're going to get those, we'll share those, in the and because uh, there's such exciting stuff that you're doing. And you're uh, Zooming with me from Fort Wayne, Indiana, where yeah. you're working on your doctoral degree. And that's just fascinating. So what? Uh, share with everybody a little bit about what your doctoral degree is in. 
Okay, I'm working on a PhD in missiology. I figure since I'm going to be out here putting in all this work, I may as well at least, you know, upgrade my toolbox a little. And plus, when the Senate called me, they gave me all the papers with all those files and all this stuff I'm supposed to have. They said that, you know, that I could go to school and they would, you know, cover some of the costs. Well, you know, COVID-19 kind of knocked the wind out of those sails too. But nevertheless, uh, I had decided to take, you know, go for the degree. I've learned a lot already. And plus, it's given me an opportunity to finally figure out whether I was St. Louis or Fort Wayne. So I am Fort Wayne. <laughs> I, I see your logo there. Yep, I'm Fort Wayne. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, well life, baby. But, uh, <laughs> But, uh, People it, from St. Louis will love you too. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the cool thing actually is the program I was, that I did my seminary through was actually supervised by St. Louis. So I'm still something of a hybrid baby. There you go. You know, there you, you, know, you got you to gotta play both sides of the fence, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So, it, you know, Pastor Campbell, it's great um, having you to have it and just to share a little bit. I, I think our people would love to hear from you. You know, one of the things we were talking about before is, you know, share with the people a little bit about some of the challenges that you sure. faced uh, in your calling. Sure. Um, a lot of people, you know, when they hear that I was Gary Bourne, and Gary Bread, they go, oh, well, well, that's great. So you got a chance to go back home. Well, yeah, that's true. I did. But that was after spending 20 years on the West Coast, 20 years in sunny Las Vegas, and even sunnier Southern California. And on top of which, you know, now having a family, all of whom were born and raised in California. So we come back to Indiana. For them, it's a new adventure. For me, it's all my nightmares. Uh, during the winter time, coming back to haunt me, but in in fact, uh, God has been good. It it has not been as we haven't had any blizzards really since I've been back here. But it's still Gary, and Gary is a city that has a great history. I mean, it, it was Steel City. It was the Magic City. It was the place where all kinds of talented, creative people were born and raised and went to school and, you know, found success. But that's history. Gary today is a shadow of that, even physically. You know, we've got 57 square miles of land and 70,000 people living in that. If Gary were designed that way, it would be beautiful. It means every house would sit on like acres of land, you know, but it wasn't designed for that. It was designed to hold 150,000. So now we're like, you know, a little kid wearing his dad's suit. It doesn't fit. On top of which, um, there have been a lot of economic issues. There have been some issues with regard to crime and such like that. But I will tell you this, um, for the most part, although I know that there is a risk factor. I mean, you know, uh, uh, gosh, just a few weeks ago, uh, there were shots fired right around the corner from my house. But I don't feel afraid, you know, when I go and go to work and talk to people and visit folk. I don't, I don't feel afraid because I know that God called me here, you know. I have my call documents. Anytime I start to wonder, all I, do, I just take a look at them. There it is right there. You were called here. And because God called me here to do his work, you know, he promises, you know, his name is a strong tower. Amen. Righteous run there. Be righteous. I don't have to worry about that part because he justified me. So I am as righteous as I can be. So there is room for me in that strong tower and for Lanita and for D2 and the girls. Yeah. So, you know, we thank you all for your prayers because I know it's your prayers that kept those bullets from going to our house. Amen. It's your prayers that, that keep drama and, and trouble and tribulation from really hitting us. It's your prayers that 
you know, kept us so that I only have to go to the doctor once a year because that's all I can afford is once a year. I tell each member of the family, you get one time to get sick because we got to pay that bill. But, you know, God has kept us and God is doing things in this city. When I got here, uh, there were people even at St. John's that were saying, you know, this church isn't going to last much longer. You know, we probably ain't going to be no more than five years. Well, that was five years ago. And, and now, and Pastor yes, Dell, yes. uh, so in Gary, Indiana, right now, how many LCMS, how many LCMS churches were there when you got there? And kind of, can you give everybody sort of an update on the status? Because uh, I know there's some kind con and conversations about sure. the school, and then what your, because you, your role has really increased within the city, there yeah. within the churches. So give everybody an update on that. When I got here, there were on paper there were five churches in Gary. Okay. There was um, Faith Lutheran in Black Oak. There was St. Philip's in uh, Terrytown. There was Our Savior in Glen Park, uh, Good Shepherd in Midtown, and St. John's in Tolleston. Well, Faith was actually just a church in name only. That very quickly folded. St. Philip's, it was operating but the people didn't want to do anything. And they would sit there and lock, they would put a padlock on the door after they left on Sunday. And I would tell them, look, you can't do that. People think you're closed and they see that padlock. And besides, we need to be doing something during the week at least once, and they didn't want to do anything. All they want to do is come on Sunday and hear me tell them that their sins were forgiven. And then uh, when one of the families moved to Arizona, that was that. So then there was Our Savior, where Our Savior was an interesting situation because it was a group of older people and a couple of young families who basically bought what used to be the Gary Lutheran School. Uh, the school had been built in the uh, early 60s. They bought the building with the purpose of refurbishing it to turn it back into a school, an active school again. Yeah. And they worshiped there while they were doing it. So when they completed the work, they turned the building over to the Indiana Lutheran School Corporation. And so Ascension Lutheran Christian School was basically a labor of love for these people who in their younger days went to that school. So we okay. knew that, I knew that one was going to close to. So that left Good Shepherd and St. John's. Good Shepherd is the church that was purpose built to be the Black Lutheran Church. St. John's is the oldest church in Northwest Indiana. Originally, it was a German church when George Tall, who was a Chicago businessman, he bought a big old parcel of land and he set up a church, a cemetery, and a post office. And they called the area Tolleston, uh, Tall's Town, in essence. Um, St. John's has been active since 1870. Um, we transitioned from being a German church with German liturgy to being a church that has an African-American population. And many of the people that are there now, uh, they went there as children. Their parents went there. Um, we, we baptized some children, some babies there. We got some, some young people there. During the summer, we work with a group called the Gary Cultural and Historical Society, and we do a youth cultural immersion uh, summer program where kids come in, they learn about music, they learn about singing and dance and art, you know, painting and photography. Uh, they also get help with their scholastic activities, you know, uh, reading, writing, uh, arithmetic, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, so, Pastor Campbell, you you know, um, thank you for giving us the updates on the challenges uh, of coming, challenges of relocating a family, yeah. and coming back home, so to speak, and leaving sunny weather, and challenges of Gary, Indiana, historically, and with Lutheranism, and, and then you also you kind of transition now to talking about partnerships. And that's a very uh, interesting partnership. 
Um, are there, what, uh, what can you share with everybody about partnerships you're working on developing? Because a, a missionary can never, you know, uh, never wants to try and do it by themselves. They always want to try and have partnerships. And so what, uh, what can you share with everybody about partnerships so uh, people get a feeling for this ministry being sustainable? long-term because long-term sustainability is about partnerships we have uh, developed relationships since i've been here with among other entities the calumet artists conservatory which helped us establish a community garden on the property of saint john's and it's a beautiful garden it, it's self well i'm not going to say it's self-sustaining but it almost is because of the climate out here you know we don't have to do a whole lot other than put the, the seeds in the ground and occasionally water it and then pull up the weeds. It pretty much does its thing. And anybody in the neighborhood can come and help out, and they do. And when when the tomatoes come up and the melons come up and the greens come up, they come over and they harvest and everything. And I'm glad they do because if they didn't, there'd be an awful lot of stuff in there. So, you know, I appreciate everybody that comes out and help. Plus, we teach people how to grow their own gardens in their own yards. Another partner, as I mentioned earlier, was uh, the Gary Cultural and Historical Society. Another great relationship that I've developed is with the owner of a local radio station, uh, Dr. Marion Williams. He owns WLTH, it's on AM and FM. He actually owns some other radio stations in the state as well. So he's a successful black man. And for some reason, he just took a liking to me. And now- he Well, who is, can blame him? I mean, that's automatic, right? Praise God. Amen. <laughs> but he has me come on the radio every Friday at 6 p.m. with a very nice young man. And it's called Issues and Answers. And we talk about all the issues of the day, both local, uh, state, federal. And because Scott Cannon, that's his name, he just insists on calling me Reverend Dale. So at first I was kind of holding back, you know, because it's a secular radio station. So I didn't want to, you know, just overdo it. But I said, you know what, man, you keep calling me Reverend Dale. I may as well just go on and do it. And so now everything I say, I'm, I talk about sin, righteousness, and judgment. I talk about what God's word says. I talk about what the confessions say and why being a confessional evangelical Lutheran Christian is, is the thing that will cause this city to go places that most people don't even think it's possible because we know that God is for us. Yeah. It's not because of great any great fireworks display that he does for us or because we got, you know, a uh, money tree in the backyard or anything like that. We don't. As a matter of fact, I'm in Gary because my 6,000 brothers and sisters in the Senate helped me stay in Gary. Um, the Senate... They, they make sure that the, the check goes to the right place, but y'all are the reason why we're here. The 6,000, you're, you're referring to the 6,000 congregations. Yeah, yep. 6,013 churches. Well, actually there's a few more than that because yep. I actually have a few churches that are not LCMS that support our work here. And to tell you the truth, some of them aren't even Lutheran. <laughs> You know what? Last time I checked, the money all spends the same. Yes, it does. <laughs> you know. So, okay. Pastor Campbell, uh, talk to us also about uh, future vision, because we're going to yes. run out of time here in a little bit. Oh, yeah. So, talk to us about future vision. I know God's laying some big thoughts on your yes. heart and your head. And, you know, Scripture says, without vision, the people perish. Uh, so, share, share what you'd like people to know about, you know, give us a little insight to future exactly. vision with your ministry there. We are developing a partnership, in fact, with Concordia Theological Seminary. Um, a lot of Another our- one in St. Louis? In Fort Wayne. A lot of our um, seminarians come from small places, from rural areas, from farms, and they really haven't had much experience in you know urban areas. Yeah. Well, I was just uh, in a conversation with uh, Dr. Don Wiley, and what they want to do is let some of their guys and their deaconesses come out for some immersive experiences, and they'll come out, and they'll work with me, we'll do ministry in the city, and it'll give them an opportunity, because some of these guys and some of these women are going to be called not to where they grew up, but to places 
like Gary, like St. Louis, like Detroit. And you don't want to send somebody and the first experience they have of being in the city is when they get off that airplane. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to be there and help them with that. Also, um, well, and also, you know, not just where their first call is, right? But I think we want to encourage an atmosphere within our, within the churches at large of, you know, working together. And so if you've never been in an urban setting, maybe your first call is not to an urban setting. Maybe your first call is to a rural or suburban setting where you're very comfortable. But because you've had that urban experience, then you're able to translate and encourage your congregation to partner and have conversation with, our brothers and sisters in another setting too, because right? Here's, here's the reality. It's not a bunch of bodies. It's one body. Mm-hmm. Many members, but one body. And Jesus said it in the word. When one suffers, we all suffer. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. So it's not about each of us competing with each other. It's all of us walking together. Synodos. That's what we are. We're walking together. And and so, you know, I know, you know, Pastor here, he, he he's really, you know, modest because he says he just got a little church. Let me tell y'all, that's a big old beautiful church with a whole bunch of beautiful people. And I love going there to preach. <laughs> but we love having you. <laughs> we we walk together, we work together, and you know, it's it's awesome because for many of the people in the city they really didn't know much about Lutheranism, right. you know. And so when they see us doing the things we do, when they see us out and about, when they see us, you know, working together, when they see us even ministering, you know, it, it's something that they didn't know. And, you know, it, it, it raises questions. Yep. You know, they, they see this, they go like, what are you? And I, <laughs> I explain it to them, you know, well, what makes you different? And I talk to them about it. Uh, sometimes they'll call me on the radio and try to play stump the pastor. And I say, you know, and after I slap them back down, I say, okay, now you come on out on Sunday and I can help you some more with that. But we're just here because God said, love your neighbor. Amen. And these people are our neighbors. Yeah. If you happen to live in California, we're your neighbor. If you live down South, you're our neighbor. We are walking together and working together and praying together. And so speaking of walking together, Pastor Campbell, as we kind of get close to wrapping this up, you have uh, put together a event for our folks on October 24th. Yes. So, you know, share with everybody, whether they're coming to this one or not, share with everybody some of the things you've got lined up for this. That will sort of give them a feel for what a trip for them might look like with you. So talk about October 24th. I know um, this. I know this. I'm going to get fed. (laughs) <laughs> twice i'm getting lunch and dinner that's what you promised me right <laughs> you're on tv yep. now right we are we are doing a day of service you know and it's at ascension lutheran yep. got some it's nothing heavy nothing that requires you have a, a degree in engineering or anything um just basically some 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 nice make the school look even prettier yep. for when the kids come back in on monday and then I said that while we're working, I was going to fire up the grill. And I've even got, I got Pastor Jim's rib tips set aside. You know, everybody else going to get some ribs and some other things. But I got some rib tips just for him. And uh, I like to cook. And I just believe that God's going to bless us with Indian summer that day. And we're going to cook. And they're going to eat. And we're going to fix things up. And our school's head mistress will be so tickled. And it's just going to be a great day and a great opportunity just to share in the goodness of the Lord in Gary, Indiana. So, Well, I'm really looking forward to this it. trip because uh, you took me out there. Remember, you took me out there, uh, it's been a year or so, and there was some work going on that particular day when we were out there. There's some, And it is, it's amazing the work that's already gone there and gone on there. I look forward to seeing more work. And yes. it's a wonderful opportunity for us. I can tell you, Pastor Campbell, that I've been sharing this already with our people and i already have people lined up that that are looking forward to coming down and you know we're looking at it you know when you and i talk we talk about a team of eight to twelve and uh, i think we're going to have a solid team for you and and we're looking forward to just getting into the work that you've got laid out for us to do that's it it's nothing's real heavy we already we already fixed the roof so (laughs) 
<laughs> we, did the big, we did the big stuff already. That's good. But I, I think there may be some gardening, uh, fixing of a uh, the this this one uh, cart where they put all the the art supplies and the, the tool closet. Just little little light fix up stuff. Basically, yeah. just get, just giving me an excuse to barbecue. Basically, I have to be honest. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you, that's awesome. <laughs> All and right. Well, Pastor to, Campbell, we are. All coming. And was so that? Be great. I said, and you all coming? It's going to be great. Give the people of St. John's to meet you all, and you all to meet them. And if anybody else just happens to be in the area, yeah, okay, you can come too. But you can't get none of Pastor Jim's rib tips. <laughs> yeah. Pastor Campbell, our uh, evening daily devotional is uh, titled "You Know Scripture That Encourages You to Pray." All so, right. Is there a scripture that encourages you to pray? Yes, there is, as a matter of fact. Uh, it's in Paul's letter to the Philippians. It begins at the, um, the end of verse 5 of the fourth chapter. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, I, I just, I love the fact that because the Lord is my shepherd, I need not fear a thing. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my help. Whom shall I fear? What can man do to me? Amen. You know, prayer is always in order. Amen. I know, you know, your 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 flesh will tell you, oh, it don't mean nothing, it don't do nothing. But you know, given that the way God moves, most of the time when God moves, you don't even know he's done it. Yep. It's just like the wind. The only reason you know the wind is there is because the leaves shake. God does a little shaking as he goes by. Amen. But since he says, that he hears and he answers, that's all you need. Because he's never lied. And he's not going to start just for you. <laughs> no, sir. So join us in prayer today. Make prayer a part of your life because that's that's you and God. Amen. Amen. That's you and God. Pastor Campbell, thank you for your time so much. And we look forward to having you back on the broadcast. And uh, I'm looking forward to being with you in person, October 24th. And again, I want to encourage uh, folks from other churches that are watching this to reach out to Pastor Campbell, keep him and his ministry in your prayers, and, uh, and pray for October 24th. Um, and that's just going to be a great time. And uh, everybody else, look forward to being with you tomorrow night for our next installment of Daily Devotions, Scripture that encourages you to pray. Let's go in peace. Let's serve the Lord. Thanks. Amen. Amen.